This is not gonna be like a typical sermon today. I'm at, I'm going to tell a fictional story. Um, this this came to me a few weeks ago. Like it was like um the what used to happen to me. Uh, was, let me start this sermon again, rewind, good morning everyone, hope you guys are doing well, uh, let's pray, Father, thank you for this day, thank you for the time that you've given us, thank you for the time that you've given us together, and thank you for this wonderful holiday season, God. I know that a lot of people are struggling, Lord God, with what's happening health-wise, what's happening with financial um, problems, death in families, and sickness and disease, God. But we know that you are the healer of everything, God, and I we know that you are the lifter of our heads and, and in you we can always have joy because the joy doesn't come from us it comes from you to us so we can live out that joy um that you have given to us and i pray that this story today gives joy and hope to people, um, and I pray that I can communicate it the way that you have given it to me, in the name of Jesus, amen. Um, I, I was going to do a story, um, about the little drummer, drum, Roman boy, and I may still do that story about how he came to be and all that, but going through the week, <laughs> I just got um, another idea. I'm part of uh, the Holly Furtick Book Club. Um, um, Holly Furtick, if you guys don't know, it is the wife of Stephen Furtick, pastor of Elevation Church, which is the church I stream online. And I'm also, so I'm a part of her book club. So Holly loves to read. Uh, we like to read different kind of books, but um, be that as it may, I'm a part of her book club. So, book club meetings are second Tuesday of every month. And if you like like some of the books I'm reading, they're from her book club. The last book club book I posted was this week. It was called The Kitchen Front. And I just read it. It's January's read. I know I read so fast, so I listen so fast. So it took me a few days to get through. It's a 13 hour listen and it's like, it's like a train. So it starts off slow, but in the middle it picks up and it's really good. So if you decide to read it, just just hold on. It gets good. Like uh, some books are really um, <laughs> some books are really good right away. Like they have a, immediately they take you into the story and it's fast paced and whatever. This book, for me, was not like that. It was a, a train, like, like, it starts off slow, but then it picks up 
in the middle. Um, so, so the last book club, club book I posted was called The Kitchen Front. It's about uh, World War Two, but it's not a sad book. It doesn't focus on the war. It focuses on a cooking contest that these four ladies um, do having to do with the, with with um, a real show um, uh, called The Kitchen Front. Although the story is fictional, the show that it centers around is really really good. So um, if you want to read it. Um, it's on my Rachel's Reads, which is my books book suggested group. So just go over to my groups and you'll see Rachel's Reads in there. You'll have all most of the books I've read within the past like three years and some even older than that. I don't post everything I read, but most all my recent reads are posted there. So anyway, I was um, in the Hollyford Book Club on Instagram on Tuesday night. And usually Holly tries to get the authors in. But this time the author didn't come on for our last months uh for our read this month which is Chris which was Christmas Shopaholic but even though she didn't come on we still had book we still had book club and during book club it was hilarious we were talking about all different kinds of things like Christmas traditions and, uh Christmas fads and all that, and <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. And then while we were we were chatting about this, chatting, chatting, uh, Pastor Stephen, her her husband, of course. <laughs> okay, we were discussing like uh, Christmas. Fans. <laughs> like uh, people like toys that were popular at Christmas and then we started to discuss the no no what happened is uh, Holly um, uh, was talking about the elf on the shelf <laughs> right there's there's this this toy you can buy called the Elf on the Shelf. And what I think it is, it's an elf that you can shape to do different things. Like, the elf can be skipping, the elf could be doing all kinds of different things on your tree. So, Holly was saying, um, so, Holly and the ladies were discussing the elf on the shelf, and everybody, she was like, do you like the elf on the shelf, or no? And then most people said, no, I don't like the elf on the shelf, and somebody even said, <laughs> this is so funny, but it's so terrible, somebody said, I told my kids the elf died of COVID. <laughs> I was like, I I died at that one. So anyway, during <laughs> during this conversation, uh, Pastor Stephen, her loving husband, said, uh, "You guys should." Y'all shouldn't be talking about the elf on the shelf. You guys should be talking about the boss on the cross. <laughs> and I was like, 
I laughed so hard. I thought, oh my god, this is... I said he's ridiculous, seriously. Any, no disrespect, mad love, but, um, so, I just, I just thought of, um, and these, so, in my bed that night, I was like, the boss on the cross, it seems like a sermon title or a story title. Boss on the Cross versus, versus Elf on the Shelf. And I'm like, oh, what does, what, and this story, you know, I'm kind of a nutty person and a creative person. So this story just came to my mind that I'm going to tell you in a few minutes. And that is the background of it. <laughs> so, this story came to my mind this week when I was thinking about the elf on the shelf versus the boss on the cross. So, literally, uh, the idea, well, the story did come from me, but the spouting of the idea, I have to thank Pastor Stephen Furtick and Holly Furtick for this. Um, it's funny. So, let's begin our story. Um, there, it's about this little sleepy town that nothing really phenomenal happens in. Kids go to school, um, adults go to work, just this regular um, small town. It's not a big city. It's maybe a town of, like, 2,000 people. They have one stoplight, one movie theater that, um, a bunch of old movies come to. Like, old movies meaning, like, if a movie comes out here, it doesn't come out there for another few few months. One high school, one grocery store, one of basically everything, one church, one synagogue, um, one mosque. Like, there, it's this really small town. Uh, they have, uh, one kind of general store, um, one library, just, just one of everything, really sleepy, really friendly town, and, uh, there is this salesman who comes to, to this town called Oneville. The salesman comes to this town and and um, he is so he's kind of a swindler. He's he is a swindler, kind of an evil person. Not evil person, but he's a swindler. So, and he's like a toy maker and a salesman. So, what he does is make um, toys that seem to be for, for children, but these ch toys are not really toys at all. You'll see what I mean later. So, this swindler comes to this town and he, because this is a town of only one, uh, just because this is a town of one, one ville, uh, with only, like, one of everything, um, like, he just thinks that he can swindle the whole, whole town, but the, but the people in the town 
are so naive, they don't really, they don't really realize that this guy's a swindler. So he sells this, he gets, he, he sees a, this swindler sees a TV commercial um, for the elf on the shelf. He sees the cute things that you can make elves do and um, he sees he sees what they're selling them for, and he says, what a great idea. So he makes his own version of the elf on the shelf, uh, and sell, and goes to this town, and sells it to this little, this little girl, who is, um, the daughter of the local preacher. So, so he is the daughter of, she is the daughter of, of a local preacher, and her father buys it for her, thinking that it's a cute elf for Christmas. So when she takes it home, though, um, she's a Her name is April, and April is a very tiny person. Like, uh, April's not the kind of person where you have to tell her at, at 12 to clean her room or whatever. She just does it. She's extremely tidy, extremely neat. Everything is just extremely tidy and extremely neat. So... Um, although she's supposed to wait until Christmas, she sees where her parents hide the Christmas gifts, and then she, um, she sees this strange box from this man. And she decides to peek into this box and sees this little elf lying there. And she's she's seen the TV commercials. She's read the in the internet ads about this about this elf on the shelf, and she is so excited. So. She opened it on Christmas Day, and when she opens it on Christmas Day, the elf is so cute, and she's like, oh, and she says, I knew that you were going to um, get me this, because I saw it before. And then they laughed because, cause, you know, like, oh my gosh, you knew? So they left. So, so Christmas Day passes by and it's New Year's Eve. And every New Year's Eve, they go to to church to ring in the new year and then before church April's room is pristine it's like everything is in its place and and um, the elf is on her bookshelf the way it's supposed to and it, it's reading a book. And, uh, out of nowhere, April feels something hit her in the head. And she turns around. She's like, what hit me? 
and she, she sees um, the window was left open, but nobody opened, like, she, she could have swore she closed it. And she said, oh, that must have been w what it was. Maybe something blew in through the window. And so she left. The, she left on New Year's Eve with her family. And then she, she comes back. She has New Year's Eve with her family. And then she comes back. And when she comes back, the downstairs of her house is clean. Everything is clean. But when she goes into her room, it's a mess. It is not the way she left it at all. Um, all kinds of books thrown everywhere. Her her desk turnover, everything just total a total mess, and she's like, "What happened?" And her, her father and her mother come come and say, "April, I thought you cleaned your room." She's like, "I did. Every everything everything uh was okay when we left." But now it's a mess. Everything is broken and tossed on the floor. And he, she said, April. Her mother said, April. You've never been. You've never been one to lie. I don't know why you're lying now, but your room wasn't cleaned. Look at it. It's a mess. And he's, and she's like, oh, um, he's, she's like, um, she, she's like, but mom, dad, I didn't mess it up. It was clean. And, um, she's, he's like, April? There's no need to lie to us, honey. We all have bad days, and, you know, you didn't, you obviously didn't clean your room. And then her parents say, you know what, it's too late now. It's after one o'clock in the morning. We'll just deal with that tomorrow. He, she's like, um, he's, her parents are like, why don't you just sleep with us tonight? Um, it's just, cause it's too messy for you to sleep on your bed, but it's too late for you to clean it up, so you can sleep with us tonight. So... She says, okay, Dad, but just let me find the elf. And the elf is right where she left it on her bookshelf with the book in his hands. So she, ta she goes through the mess and takes the elf and, <laughs> and um, she says, she goes to her parents' room and snuggles up with them and between them and hugs the elf. And then he, she says, Good night, elf! And then she goes to sleep. She w The next morning, when April wakes up, she... She hears her mother scream, and it's like, like she woke, she wakes up to her mother screaming, and she's like, she, 
she bursts through the door, runs downstairs, and it turns out that the elf, like, ransacked their whole living room. It was just a mess. You think April's room was anything, but this was crazy. Everything was turned over, chairs turned over, tables turned over, everything broken, um, gum, uh, her mother's purse was emptied of gum, and the gum was stuck, chewed, and stuck to the ceiling. Everything was crazy. And, like, the pastor came and said, what was going on? This was clean last night. What's going on? And she's like, uh, and he looks at his daughter and says, April, did you sneak downstairs and, <laughs> and trash the whole place? She's like, Daddy, I didn't. It was the elf. No, no, she's like, Daddy, I didn't. And he, she's like, April, he's like, April, I know you were upset, but that's no need to lie. You trashed your room, and because we found out you got mad and you came down here and did the same thing to the living room. She's like, Daddy, I did it. I don't know who did. And then, um, and then they spent New Year's Day, like, cleaning their house. And when the house is clean, um, April decides to prove that she didn't trash her room and then trash downstairs. Um, she decides, uh, because she's 12, she got a cell phone for Christmas, and she decides to put the cell phone on automatic record to record what what is going on in the house right so um so she set up her cell phone um on record to record what's going on in the house and um She goes to sleep with her parents, dining room clean, everywhere clean, even, even her room clean. And then the next morning, the living room is, tr no, the next morning, the kitchen is trashed. Everything is everywhere. The food shakers are everywhere. The, Salt is everywhere. Everything's a mess. And... But she remembers where she put her... Her, uh, cell phone camera. And... She... She went to see if the cell phone camera caught anything. And sure enough, the cell phone camera caught the elf ju jumping down off the shelf and creating havoc in their living room, in their kitchen. And, like, it shows the elf turning over everything, opening cupboards, and doing all this stuff. And her, she ran into her parents, 
room and said, See? See what the elf did to the kitchen? And... And, um... Is like, see what the elf did to the kitchen? And, uh... And her parents say, we see. And then... When the parents... When the parents watch the video and see what the elf did to the kitchen, they immediately throw the elf out in the garbage. But what happens? The elf escapes the garbage garbage truck. The thing jumps out and goes to the neighbor's house and and does the same thing to all the neighbors and takes overthrows the garbage cans and uh, spray paints the windows because the elf gets the paints from the garage and starts creating havoc uh, from the garage and um, so, the, the, the neighbors start coming to the pastor and complaining about all this stuff happening in their homes and in their neighborhoods. And the funniest one was when the elf gets into the stoplight, the one stoplight, and changes it from green to yellow to red like flashing lights so one moment it will be green one moment it will be yellow one moment it will be red it's like a st strobe light and the, the strobe light stop traffic and it's just creating havoc in this town like um, breaking into the one grocery store and breaking into the church and <coughs> excuse me vandalizing the church and doing all of that so uh so what happened is um that uh there um the man who gives them <coughs> excuse me the man who gave them this elf, um, the pastor tries to find him because um, people are complaining that all of this destruction is going on. And um, in Wonderville, so he tries to find the man, but th that he got this elf from that's causing so much trouble and then the man is not there at all like he can't find him on the internet he can't find him in the anywhere he he drives he can't find him the pastor they're all looking and looking uh, to take back this um, elf that is causing so much trouble, um, but they can't find him. So, because they can't find him, their next, their next option is to destroy him. So, they they try that, but um, they try taking the batteries out of him, but the man who designed him designed him. When they cut the legs off or take the batteries out or try to destroy him, it grows back. And then when it grows back, it grows back even worse. So, like, so when they try and cut off his legs, his legs get longer and try and take over this 
whole town and try and just wreak havoc and nobody's safe because of this elf. And like, um, but one day this, the, the preacher um, puts his sermons up on YouTube. His church, um, as small as the town is, they still put their put the preacher's sermons up on YouTube, and uh, he decides uh, one the next Christmas to do a sermon called the boss on the cross and he says this may seem like an easter sermon but it actually the whole story of jesus starts on christmas and he goes through the life of jesus um saying ha explaining different ways how jesus was um how when he collected, how when he called the disciples to um, be fishers of men and not just fishermen for fish, that he was collecting his mob. He was like a mob boss in a good way. And that he collected and trained and taught these people uh, how to um, how to live and how to be because before before Jesus, these people didn't really know how to be. They were just uh, following the laws that they had been taught and they they were just um following the laws that they had been taught and and so, and then he's saying um as jesus was doing so much good and so many miracles and being such a boss that the people who thought they were the boss uh, were upset at Jesus, meaning the scribes and Pharisees and what, whoever, because they were just, they just, um, they just were so used to following the law and Jesus didn't follow the law so they decided to kill him because they were threatened by him and so um so they set up the cross but on the third day we know that Jesus arose and took back the keys of death and hell like the boss you know um, and he showed himself the true boss because he took back the keys of death and hell, good and evil, and rescued all humankind. So, on, well, the elf one day after this sermon was being preached, uh, was searching mob bosses on YouTube because he had just been going crazy. They tried to arrest him. It didn't work. He busted out of jail. They tried everything to stop this, uh, I would say, demon elf from doing any harm, doing any more harm, because he had es escalated, um, to be from going into people's houses and garbage cans to beating up little kids and just causing so much horribleness. So anyway, 
um, he was watching YouTube and this pastor's sermon, and he, uh, the pastor was talking about the real boss on the cross, and the boss, and he was saying, the boss is not in a mob, the boss is not like you're, like you're big and bad, the real boss is Jesus Christ, <laughs> and, like, something in, in the elf was like, Oh, so, so, to make a long story short, uh, the elf, um, <laughs> the elf found the Lord, and then after, after the elf's conversion, he was so evil before, like, beating people up, and, Oh, it was terrible, but after his conversion, it was, it was so different that, um, that the, he, he wanted to make amends for all he had done, and he didn't know how to, the poor thing didn't know how to do it. So what happened was, um, he decided to, um, help the preacher, uh, that he lived with for a while with his sermons and just, um, spreading the love of Jesus to people, like, and talking about how he was made by this evil swindler who, who wanted to make money and terrorize people, so, and that, that he got, that he got the evil taken out of him by Jesus, and <laughs> I, I know this is a kind of stupid story, but this, this goes to show that no matter how bad you are, and no no matter how bad you think you are, and no matter how, what you've done to people, no matter, no matter, even if it's not your fault, you, Jesus loves you, and you, there is nothing that you have done that is beyond G Jesus, and you, you, there are some of you out there today that want to be a boss, that want to be a big man, big woman, and you think it's through your success and through your own ingenuity, but that, that kind of success is empty. The real success is in Christ, and he wants me to tell you that his love can cover all your sins, and His grace can restore you, and it will restore you, and He's waiting for you, and He's the real boss, He's the real reason for this season, the real reason for this season, and why we give gifts, is because um, God gave His ultimate gift which is Jesus Christ. That is why we give gift to symbolize, not so we can get more, but we do it at Christmas time to symbolize how God gave the greatest gift of Jesus Christ. And even though the way you, you were raised or the way I uh, you were formed the way you grew up didn't didn't start out good you can you can have a new life the bible says his mercies are new every morning and like this elf that terrorized the town and then became 
the assistant to the preacher. You can turn your life around. I know this is just a stupid story, but the 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 essence of the story is true. You are never too far from God. You've never done too much, too little, too whatever to be God's child. He's just waiting for you to receive him. He loves you and he's close to you. Thank you guys and Merry Christmas. And forgive my silly story about the elf on the shelf versus the boss on the cross. <laughs> um, see, I'll see you. Oh, I should say how the elf got to be the pastor's assistant. I didn't say that. I just said he was. Well, one day after his conversion, he wanted to make amends, and he was going around uh, fixing people's gardens or what he had broken. He, he was going around fixing it and buying people stuff. Uh, and going around spreading cheer where he had spread discord before. Um, because that's what happens when Jesus comes into your life. He changes your perspective. Um, you don't spread discord anymore. You spread cheer. So he was going around spreading cheer. But he's like, what else can I do? And um, he... he um, saw one day that the preacher was um, needing uh, somebody to wipe the sweat off his brow because he was sweating because he was preaching so hard. So the elf jumps up right in church and gives the preacher a handkerchief. And then... From there, he starts doing more and more for the preacher and starts just spreading the love of God throughout the town because that's what God does when you accept him. He just changed your whole life. And the first thing he does basically is change your perspective and takes you through a process to be more like him. So, and accepting the Lord is so easy. All you have to do is pour out your heart to Him. Tell Him you need Him. Tell Him what's in your life and in your mind and in your heart. And He is so willing to come into it and, and restore what's been broken. He is king for that. And he wants me to say that it's not too late. There's nothing that you've done. There's nothing that you will ever do to separate you from his love. He loves you so much with an everlasting love. He's just waiting for you today. And then if you need help after you pour out your heart to the Lord, um, I'm here. So just message me. And I'd be happy to give you next steps. Bye. I hope you enjoyed my crazy story about the elf on the shelf versus the boss on the cross. Um, have a good day. And don't be nervous if this is on a totally different subject. Don't be nervous if God changes your plans. Because as I said, in the middle of this, God changed my whole plan for this story. My story was supposed to be about the little drummer boy. 
by going through this and going through this week and uh, uh, doing the Holy Birdie Book Club and uh, and all that, it gave me the story idea when Pastor said the boss on the cross. It just sparked something in me. So I hope you enjoyed this story. About one, one bill. And how the boss on the cross changes everything. He changes lives. He changes just hearts and attitudes. And don't be afraid for him to change your plans. We, many are the plans in a man's heart. But the Lord has the best plans. And he knows what he wants to take you through. So thank you for listening today. Bye.